below. What? It's Nicole Steele. Time for the happy half hour. My Facebook Live. You can see I got my new stamp and cut and emboss machine, and I've had time to play with it. So I thought we would take a look at it today, in addition to doing the two birthday cards, the guy birthday cards. So I have everything pulled up. I can see comments. If you are joining me live, thank you. I'm Nicole Steele, the owner and the creator behind the Joyful Stamper. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, so everything I show you today, yes, I do have a store that has all of that, but... More importantly, we're just here to stamp and just talk and have fun. So if you are watching the replay, I welcome you too. And you're welcome to leave a comment because I do go back and read those. So if you have questions, you can just put them in the comments and I will be sure to see them. So yeah, so I got this arrived on Saturday. And only demonstrators can get the stamp and cut and emboss machine right now. But September 1st is when it's open to everybody. So this is the standard machine. So it's, yeah, we're going to take a look at it. So make sure if you pop on, say hi, leave a comment, because, you know, Facebook, Facebook's strange. It doesn't always show me if anyone's even on here, so sometimes it looks like I'm talking to myself, which sometimes I am. So don't be shy, but... Yeah, it's really, it's another hot one. I was just outside with my dog right now trying to get, let off her energy before we started. So it's hot already here in Pittsburgh, but I'm going to show you this. So we're going to start off with this and then after we're done looking at that, whoops, we're going to make these two cards here, but I'm going to change something up on this one. So two guy birthday cards. I had a request for them. So I thought, why not? They are hard to make, right? Okay. So let's, I'll show you the stamp and cut and emboss machine. So this is the standard size. There is a mini one coming out and, but it's not going to be available just yet. So when you get it, you're going to have to attach the handle. It's not a big deal. It's just a little screw that goes in there and it even comes with a little Allen wrench to turn it. And then it has this little end cap you pop on it. That's it. Then it folds up. So if you have a table, you're putting it on, it's nice and compact. And to open it, just reach it like this and open it up. So it's got a nice, wide, sturdy platform. The platform sits all the way down onto your table. So it's not going to rock or wobble. It feels really sturdy. And it's a nice white color, too. So I thought we would have... I'm going to show you the different sandwiches that you can use. So it comes with the plates that you're going to need. And I'm sorry for the glare that is on these clear plates here. But it's going to come with the, actually, here's another one. It's going to come with the plates that you need to do your basic embossing and your die cutting. So you don't need to purchase these separately. And you've got, this is your base plate. It's the thicker one. And you can see these are numbered, which is super nice because depending on what you're doing, you're going to use different combinations of these plates. So, on this base plate right here, it tells you the different sandwiches that you're going to use. So let's try it. Your base plate's always going to go first. So we'll start with that one. And let's try some die cutting. So we start with plate number one. And then we put down plate number two, which is this one right here. So we've got that, and now I'm going to put down my cardstock, and let's do let's do a pink snowflake. So I'll see. Put down number two. Then we have plate number three. I'm gonna put that snowflake on. Put plate number three on top, and let's run it through. And it turns very smoothly. This is easy getting it through this machine. There we go. Now it's normal for your plates to get marked up like that. So that's not a defect. Look, there it is. Okay. So it die cut it. So that, that die cuts nice. 
Let me put that back. Okay, this is so helpful having these numbered and having the sandwiches printed right on this base plate right here. Okay, so now we're going to try a standard embossing folder. So that's the next one. So we're starting with our base plate number one. Then we're going to put down base plate number three, which is the one of the clear ones. And this is for your standard embossing folder. So these are the embossing folders that are thinner. Put your cardstock inside of the embossing folder, lay it on that clear plate. And then we're going to put the second clear plate marked number three on top and let's roll it through. I can't believe how smoothly this turns. Wow. So this is your standard embossing. Oh, look at that. That's the snowflake folder from the new snowflake splendor suite. I like that. That's so pretty. I think I'm going to watercolor this. Okay, so that was a standard embossing folder. Now let's try it with what's called the 3D embossing folder. So the 3D embossing folders are a little bit thicker. I'll show you the difference here. They're standard. This is 3D. You can see the difference in the sizes there. So let's put our cardstock in the 3D embossing folder. And we're going to do our sandwich again. So now I'm looking at this base plate number one for that sandwich. So base plate number one goes down. Then we have our 3D embossing folder and we're going to put our cardstock in there. Now here's another, tr here's a trick I learned. If you take a Stampin' Spritzer filled with water and you just give your cardstock a nice little spray like that before you put it in your 3D embossing folder, it makes a deeper impression. I think it's because it softens those cardstock fibers. So we've got the base plate number one, remember they're all numbered, our 3D embossing folder, which is the thicker one with a piece of dampened cardstock in there, which the spraying of water is completely optional. Hello, good morning, Sharon. Then we're gonna put this number four specialty plate on top. Because the 3D embossing folders are a little bit thicker, we don't need to use those clear cutting plates. It'll make it too thick to go through the machine. And then I'll take it out. Oh, there's some ink left on my embossing folder here. And we've got that. That's a really nice deep impression. Spraying it with water actually does make a really big difference. So I thought, let's see if we can get it. There's velvet paper and felt in the holiday mini catalog. So I thought, let's see if we can get it to cut through either one of those materials, right? So let's give it a test try. So your base plate number one is always going to be a part of these sandwiches. That's always going to go on there. So we'll put that down. Let's try. I just saw a demonstrator this morning. She made a poinsettia out of the red velvet. So I'm not even in camera out of this red velvet paper. And I thought it looked gorgeous. So let's try it. Okay. And I'm going to use the poinsettia dies and I'm going to use the embossing piece and the die cutting piece on this too. Okay. So since I'm going to do some die cutting base plate one followed by the base plate marked two, the cutting plate marked three, I've got my red velvet paper and my poinsettia die cut side down and then I'll put cutting plate three on top. All right, let's run it through. Oh my gosh, I think this is gonna look really pretty. And if you want to, you can reverse the handle and run it through a second time. Sometimes with the more intricate dies, that's a good idea because it might take a couple passes to get it to cut. Oh, it worked. It worked. Look at that. Do you see the embossing on this? Oh my gosh red velvet poinsettias on your Christmas cards, guys. How pretty would that be? I'm super excited about this. <laughs> oh, that was a great idea that that demo had. Okay, so we know it works on red velvet paper. Let's try it with felt now. This felt is also in the holiday catalog and I'm going to use a snowflake splendor die. Now here's the thing. I don't think this is going to work with 
the more intricate snowflake dies like that. So I'm going to use one of the open outline shapes, but we can try it both ways. Okay, so I'm going to keep the same sandwich because I'm die cutting. Base plate one, plate two, cutting plate three. Now I'm going to put my felt down with my snowflake. And I'm going to put cutting plate three on top. All right, let's see what it does. Felt snowflakes. I'm all over that. Okay, I heard that cracking sound. That's completely normal. And that means it cut. It did. <gasps> Look at that. We could have felt snowflakes. And the felt comes in, um, oops, a little fuzz on there, red and early espresso in white. And this coastal cabana. Oh my gosh, that is so pretty. Let's try one of the more intricate snowflakes now. We'll see if we can get it to die cut that. All right, let me put my pieces away here. I don't want to lose them. Okay. So we keep so plate one, plate two, plate three. This really is helpful having these numbered. Okay. And then I'll put the second plate three on top. Oh, I hear it cracking. I think it's gonna work. I'm gonna run it back through just to be sure. It did work. Well, sort of. Mm, no. So the more intricate snowflakes, I'd say with the felt, not gonna work, but it did perfectly fine on the open snowflake die. So, all right. Now we know we can cut felt and we can cut velvet paper with this. That certainly opens up possibilities, doesn't it? Okay. So yeah, overall, I like this machine. I'm glad I got it. You guys have seen me use my cuddle bug, which you know I've had for, what, 17 years? And it has served me well. I'm keeping it. I'm not getting rid of it. The main reason I got this is actually because of the thicker 3D embossing folders. I had to make a shim for my cuddle bug. And I wasn't, it was working, but I wasn't getting as deep of an impression. So now I can use this specialty plate with it and just runs right through with my 3D folder. So super happy about that. Okay. Let me put this away. They're fine. <laughs> my daughter's trying to sneak downstairs. Okay, so here's the thing. That machine, actually, they, if um, you decide you want one, you can put them in your starter kit. So you're allowed to put $125 of product in your starter kit, and it's only going to be $99, and you get free shipping on it. Well, the machine is $120, and it comes with the plate, so you can actually put it in your starter kit when you join. And you don't have to do anything else if you don't want to. So something to think about. You could actually get that machine for $99 and no shipping. And all you have to do is sign up and join my team. So, all right, let me make sure I'm still in the camera and we'll get started on these cards. Okay. So this is the first one we're going to do today. And actually my inspiration for this was a card in the holiday catalog. And it's on page 56. Let me see if I still have it open to that page. 56. Right here, this is the card I was looking at. So I have somebody that wants to buy a bunch of guy birthday cards for me, and I thought, well, I'm gonna turn to the catalog for inspiration, and I saw this. Now this plaid paper is actually from the Plaid Tidings Designer Series paper, but I don't have this paper, so I thought, hmm, how can I make it with what I have? Well. I remembered I do have the Buffalo Check stamp set. This right here. So I'm going to use this to make my own plaid. Okay? And let me pull out my pieces. We'll get started. So, how has everyone's week been? I feel like I don't know what day it is anymore. I'm sure when my kids go back to school, I will have a better idea of it but right now they're home my husband's home and so I'm completely losing track of what day it is so today's Thursday I do know that I 
do know that. All right, let me get myself situated. Always got to start with your card base, right? Cinnamon Cider. Have you guys played with Cinnamon Cider yet? It's one of the new in colors. I haven't played too much with it, but oh my goodness. Once you, I started pairing it with a bunch of different colors, I really, I liked it. I, so just looking at it, I'm kind of like, mm, okay, we don't have a brown like this, but all right. But once I started mixing and matching it with other colors, I really got into it and it became a lot more fun and I saw all the possibilities. It actually goes with quite a lot of different colors. Now, this is a piece, piece of bumblebee and it is cut to five inches by three and three quarters. So you guys know I make a project sheet, so you don't have to worry about writing these down. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some liquid glue on here if there's any left in my bottle. And I'm gonna put it just a little bit wonky on my card. So it's a little bit crooked. We wanna make sure we show off all the details of this card. Hi, Joanne. Hello, hello. We're getting in the fall mood today with the plaid and the pumpkins and all that. Okay, now to stamp. You guys have seen me use the Buffalo Check stamp where I just leave it in the stamp case and I go ahead and, and just use it that way. Well, today, because I wanted it to be super solid and goof proof, I'm going to use a stamp positioner. Now, Stampin' Up! does have a stamp positioner. It's called the Stamparatus, and it's actually open on two of the sides. So you can use any length of paper that you want. You're not limited. I bought the Misty when the original when it first came out a few years ago and it does have a ruler on all the sides so my paper is limited to this space right here. You can go with either one, they do the same job. Um, so it's entirely up to you. You get magnets with the stamp apparatus, they're bar magnets, you get magnets with this Misty and it's meant to hold your paper down. So when I'm using a background stamp, I want to cut my paper larger than what I actually mean for it to, with the finished size to be, only because I want to use this, the magnets to hold it down. And if I cut the paper to the exact size of the background stamp, I have no way of anchoring it to the stamp positioner. Okay, now we're going to use sh Shaded Spruce to ink up the stamp. So I've already put, let's see if I'm in the camera, yes. I've already put my background stamp onto the lid of the stamp positioner, okay? And now I'm going to open up my case. This is shaded spruce, my ink pad, I mean, and I'm going to tap it onto my ink pad. Some people prefer to use these little ink spots because it's less messy. There, you don't get the ink all over your clear plate here, which you can completely, it's fine to wipe this off. You can use a baby wipe or a rag to wipe this off. Um, it's not really an issue, the mess with a large background stamp. With a smaller stamp, it would be. But Stampin' Up! has uninked stamping spots that you can fill with a re-ink in any color you want. So I've inked that up and now I'm going to press it down onto my cardstock here. I'm giving it a good press and I'm lifting it up. So you see how there's some empty spots there? Well the beauty of the stamp positioner is as long as the paper doesn't move I can re-ink this and I can stamp again. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So I can get a nice solid smooth plaid. For my background. Okay. Love it. All right, we've got that. I'm going to clean my stamp off with a baby wipe because I think I'm going to use it in my next card. So I want it to be clean. And shaded spruce is a really dark color. Oh, background stamps, I love them, but they are they're hard to use. I mean, hard to clean. Not hard to use. Hard to clean. Might have to use a couple wipes for this one. That green is a really dark color. Do you guys use background stamps? Or do you tend to use pattern paper or use smaller stamps to make your backgrounds? Okay. Get this all off. That green gets really dark. Okay, so my daughter, my youngest daughter, is in the middle of a giant paint project. She 
totally took this on herself. She wants her room to be gray now, not purple. She moved out all the furniture, the loft beds, the desks, and she shares a room with her older sister who's at college right now. So um, she did this all by herself and she primed the room and I took her to get the paint and she painted it and, or she's painting it now and she taped it off. I mean, I'm so impressed. She's 15 years old and she totally took this on herself. So maybe she has a future with her own painting business, right? They're in demand. I mean, I don't, I don't like to paint. I do not like to paint. I tried it once with my husband and he fired me. He totally fired me. Okay, I'm gonna cut this to, um, what am I cutting it to? Five inches by three and three quarters of an inch to get it on my card. So first I'm gonna trim off those white spaces. And I want it three and three quarters. Gray seems to be the popular color for rooms for painting now. And it's actually what my husband and I want to paint our bedroom. So I'm thinking what we might do is whatever gray paint she has left over, use to paint our bedroom. That way we don't waste it. All right, now here's what I'm going to do. So this is fine the way it is. Okay, it looks good. But I wanted to bring some of this bumblebee into this plaid. So I'm going to take my bumblebee stamp and write marker. This is not a stamp and blend. This is just the regular stamp and write marker with the dye based ink in it. And I'm going to use that skinny bullet point and I'm going to use a ruler. And I'm going to draw some lines here. So in these, I'm going to draw them in these white blocks here. So I'm going to line my paper up using the grid marks on this grid paper so that I can get everything straight. I've got my ruler here and I'm going to draw two lines in each of those white spaces there. Now I've painted my own plaid backgrounds before so if you use the wide water brush that we carry you can and mix a little bit of water with your reinkers your ink, re ink pad reinkers, you can use that wide water brush to paint lines across water, our fluid watercolor paper and you let that dry and then you go in with the second color and you can make plaid patterns that way. I did it on a Halloween card once with some purples, greens, and blacks. Oh my goodness. It was lovely. Lovely, lovely. Okay, now I'm going to turn my paper 180 degrees, line it up with my grid marks again, and I'm going to draw one bumblebee line going through that white section there. Just like this. So this shaded spruce is a nice color for Christmas. You could use a cherry cobbler marker to do the same plaid. Ooh, and the perfectly plaid stamp set with the pine trees that you can punch out. I think that would look really good. Okay. There's my plaid. I have a stamp and write marker and the Buffalo check stamp set. And now we're going to glue this on here. All the different color combinations you can use. It's fun. And if you ever get stuck with color combinations, just look through the Stampin' Up! catalog. Look at the designer series paper. That'll give you some ideas. I always like to start there. Okay, so we've got that. Now next up, I'm bringing in my stamps. And the sets I'm going to use, I'm using Gather Together for the Pumpkins, these two here. And I did pull out a recent celebration set, Sending You Thoughts. This is from just this past winter celebration, and I'm going to use this Happy Birthday set. It's Happy Birthday stamp. It's just it's just the right size. It's exactly what I wanted. Okay, so now I'm going to... I already went ahead and cut and die cut, um, or colored and die cut the, some of these pumpkins, but I'm going to show you what I did. So I stamped this, all the pumpkins, in soft suede ink onto crumb cake cardstock 
And then I took a pumpkin pie Stampin' Right marker and a crumb cake Stampin' Right marker and I'm gonna color these in. So the crumb cake marker is for the stem and I'm using the brush tip and the pumpkin pie is for the pumpkin itself. And here's the thing, you don't have to worry about fully coloring this pumpkin in. I just did some quick brush strokes and what I really like about it is the empty white space is left. It almost makes it look like it's watercolored, even though it's not. So I did that, I stamped it, colored it, and then what I did is I used the coordinating gathered leaves dies that goes with the Gather Together stamp set to die cut some pumpkins. So there they are. And then what I used for my label that I'm going to put everything on is I got the Magic in the Night, or they're called Halloween Magic dies. They're in the holiday catalog, and I used this label die right here to cut it from a crumb cake cardstock. And that's what this piece is right there. Okay, and we're going to, you know what? I had a piece of white paper here for my greeting, but I have to pull out another scrap. See if I can get the right size here. We're just gonna, once we stamp the greeting, we're gonna trim it down. So it doesn't really matter what size you start with. And we're gonna use shaded spruce to stamp that happy birthday. And I'll do it right there. Now with this darker color, like this shaded spruce, I like to give it a little bit of time to dry because it is a thicker, darker color. So while it's drying, let's pull out this embroidered ribbon. I love it because it's so soft. Now what I'm going to do is I want to do a little zigzag. If you guys participated in my last mystery stamping, zigzagging ribbon is exactly what we did. I even did a very short little demo on it, but I'm going to do the same technique here on this card. So I have a general idea of where to put this. I'm going to lay my label down because I want this ribbon to go behind the label. And I'm going to just lay my label down like that and that way I know where to put my adhesive. Now I have the old fast fuse left I'm still using. Our Stampin' Seal Plus is what replaced the fast views. So that's what you would use. And now I'm going to go ahead and just do a little zigzag of the ribbon here. And if you're not sure how far down to make it go, just put your label there so you get a good idea. And we're gonna fold it up and we'll fold it back down again. And then I'll take my scissors and trim it. I can tell I'm gonna run out of this ribbon because I just love it so much, so, so much. And I'm gonna put this label on with dimensionals because I'm gonna glue it over top of this ribbon, so I really need to lift it up a little bit. Have you guys started making any fall cards yet? What about Christmas cards? Or is it too early? Some people have been making them all year. I know in Split Coast Stampers, there's a monthly challenge to uh, make Christmas cards every month. So those ladies go all year long, all year long. All right, I'm gonna trim down my greeting now so I can get it fitting on my card here. Let's go. Actually, I'm gonna hand trim this. I think it's probably easier. I'm going to cut it straight across and I kind of want to get it as close to that greeting as I can. And then I'm going to put it there and see. Okay, that looks like about right. And now the way I'm going to lay everything out is this pumpkin's going to go here. This one's going to get tucked behind the greeting and this one's going to go there. So what I want to do, in order to do this efficiently, I'm going to put glue on just the bottom half of those pumpkins that are getting glued to my sentiment strip. And then I will go ahead and glue this one that's tucked behind to my card. And I'm going to sort of arrange it again to see if I've got it where I want it. I do. 
And then I'll flip that over and I'll add some dimensionals to the back. And it'll be on the top half of those pumpkins there. Because they're kind of hanging off. And then I'm going to put some glue right there. So it's only those pumpkins that are lifted up. Oh, cross country. I coach cross country and it's supposed to start on Monday. It's supposed to. Okay. There's the card. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. I love this masculine card. I love making my own plaid too. That was so fun. I'm going to do it on the second card. Now on the second card, I did something a little bit different, but I think I might change it up right now because I think I like this way better. So let's take a look at it, but you know what? I'll leave those there while I put these stamps away. Let's see here. I'm going to get out my next stamps. Uh, I like to clean up my space before I move on to my next project. It helps me think better. If I don't do that, I feel like everything's all messy and confused and then I lose things. Okay, so this was the next one. And I 100% made my own plaid for this one. And I used a ruler. I used Blackberry Bliss, Cherry Cobbler, and a Misty Moonlight Stampin' Right marker. So it was these three colors right here. And I also used a chalk marker for the white line. And I took a ruler and I just randomly went down and drew them. But I'm thinking what I might like a lot better is to use that Buffalo check stamp again and go in with a cherry cobbler um, marker. So I'm going to give it a try. Here's the thing though. I actually don't have a Misty Moonlight ink pad, but I do have the stamp and write marker. And because it's the Buffalo check is a red rubber stamp, I can color on it. So that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. Hopefully, let me give this a stamp to make sure it's clean. Because remember, I was using shaded spruce. So, okay, it looks pretty good. So we're good. I need a piece of gray granite cardstock. Now, my original one, I cut for exactly the size I needed. So it's this one right here. But you can see, there is no room for me to put my magnets on it. Because if I put the magnets on it, it gets in the way of the stamping. So... And I really need it to stay still. So what I'm going to do is get another piece of gray granite cardstock. See if I've got one over here. I do. Okay. And I'm going to put that down. And that way I can anchor it at the top here. And then I can go over and stamp it again and again until I get a really good image. A space. Okay. We're going to use the brush tip end of my Misty Moonlight marker, and I'm going to color on this because remember, I don't have the ink pad. Here's the really cool thing, though. Because this is going to stamp in the exact same place every single time, you can actually make this different colors. So if I didn't want, if I wanted this to be a variety of colors. I can color part of my stamp one color, stamp it, open my stamp positioner back up, add the second color, stamp it again. I mean, you can keep going like that. Can you imagine if, let's say you had a tree stamp and you wanted fall colors on it, you could color that tree stamp, let's say with crushed curry markers, stamp it, open it back up, and then add in like cherry cobbler. You could add in, um, I don't know, shaded spruce. Oh my goodness, it would be so easy to get multicolored images from this, just using this technique. Okay. Stamp this again. All right, now that came out much, much lighter. And I'm gonna go over it, I'm gonna go over it just one more time because I didn't make my original card this way, so I really don't know how it's going to turn out. We're just going to have to see, right? I love plaid. It's so cozy. 
I'm ready for fall. I don't like to wish time away, but I miss my hoodies. I miss my hoodies. I miss my hot chocolate. And goodness knows, I miss cross country. I sincerely hope it happens this year, but I'll find out August 24th. That's when the powers that be will decide if high school athletics progresses. I don't know what will happen to the kids that do this for scholars, trying to get scholarships to college. Okay. I'm going to keep it like that. I like that faded look, actually. It kind of reminds me of flannel. Now, I'm going to have to trim this down again to get it the size that I want it to be. Let me close this up. The only reason I put that piece of scratch paper in there is because I just personally don't particularly like cleaning off that platform, although you can. <laughs> I just don't want to, so I stick the paper in there. I'm going to cut this down to the same size as my last card. So I'm going to trim off the extra first, that little overhang. And then I'm going to cut it to three and three quarters by five inches. But I need to cut that off. Okay, five inches. All right, there we go. Put this aside. And now I'm going to pull out my cherry cobbler marker. And we're going to add the lines in there. Same method, using that little bullet point there. This time, though, I'm stamp. I, instead of stamping it on Whisper White, I'm stamping. I stamped it on gray granite cardstock. So it gives it a whole different look. Now you can see I'm not being overly precise with this. I'm using a ruler and the grid lines on my grid paper to make sure I get this straight, but. I'm not worried about if I'm an eighth of an inch inside every single row. That just doesn't matter to me. And now I'm going to turn it, line it back up, and I'm going to go, let's go two lines like we did last time. So my other daughter, her SAT got canceled for the third time. The third time. <laughs> the poor girl, it got canceled on her in March, the night before she was supposed to take it for the first time. We rescheduled. That got canceled. We rescheduled for August. She just found out yesterday that the school she was going to be taking it at decided they didn't want to do it. So it kept canceled. So now... She is scheduled to take it in September. Um, ugh, craziness, let me tell you. She's already applied to colleges. She told them she was going to be sending them her SAT scores. She doesn't have them. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. Ugh. But it'll all work out. And the reason I know that is because it always does. It always works out without fail. So no reason to worry, right? I really like this look. Oh my goodness, you guys. <laughs> it really does remind me of a flannel shirt from L.L. Bean. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put glue on here. This is Misty Moonlight cardstock, and it's just a standard 5.5 by 8.5 inch base that I folded in half at 4 and a quarter inches. There we go. And the next thing I'm going to do is I have a piece of gray granite cardstock. Now, if you cut it to the same size, three and three quarters by five inches, you'll have plenty of room to tear because you can see we want it, we're going to do like a diagonal tear so it sits on the bottom half of the card there. I use this piece to actually make that first card. So now I'm just going to use it for this card. So I'm going to take it and I'm gonna tear it. So you can use scraps for this, it's completely fine. There's no exact um, measurement for it. The only thing that I need to be concerned about is that I wanna stamp my sentiment down there in the corner. Okay, so I have it torn. I'm not gonna trim it, I'm leaving it like it is. 
And I'm going to stamp the sentiment in cherry cobbler ink. I love paper tearing. It was one of my first techniques. I don't even know if you could call it a technique because it's so easy, but it was one of the first things I did. And for some reason, it completely blew my mind when I did that. This birthday greeting is from Timeless Tropical. Oh, actually, I need that cherry cobbler, so I'm going to leave that out. Uh-oh, I am missing my lighthouse stamp. Hmm. Okay. Oh, here it is. It's on the floor. These clear stamps, they are buggers when they go missing. They are buggers. I have the worst time finding them. Oh, my goodness. Okay. That was a frightening moment, but we're good now. We're good. All right, next up, I took the largest oval from the Stitch Shapes dies and I die cut it from Whisper White cardstock. And we are going to stamp our lighthouse on there in Cherry Cobbler ink. Now with these two step stamps, oh, the, the stamps are from High Tide. The set right here. So these are meant to be layered on each other. And I find when I'm using stamps like that, the more solid image is the one I stamp first and then I find it easier to line up the detailed image so I'm gonna stamp the more solid lighthouse stamp first cherry cobbler ink and it's gonna be stamped right onto this oval there are no dies to go with this set but I have been known to fussy cut this lighthouse before I'm not fussy cutting it this time I'm just stamping it straight on my cardstock now if you're nervous about doing that you can use the stamp positioner Either the Misty, which I have, or the Stamparatus, which is what Stampin' Up! has. And this will work in that too. Now I'm going to ink up the detailed part of the stamp in Cherry Cobbler, but before I stamp it, I'm going to stamp it off once on my scratch paper. And then I have to put my head in here to line it up. There we go. I like stamping it off once when I'm layering this lighthouse stamp because I think it makes that detail more noticeable. Um, another pretty way to do it, you could stamp that detailed part, the one I just stamped off, you could do that in a gray ink. That would look pretty too. But this looks good. So we're going to put that there. Then I have pulled out some braided linen trim. This is in the annual catalog. And you can use it like it is. That's fine. Tied in a knot. It'll look good, but I want to destroy it. And I'm going to do that by pulling these apart. The more frayed it looks, the better. I put this post up on my blog this morning, and I said this detail is totally me. The more frayed and ragged and destroyed it is, the more it makes my heart sing were my words. And it's so true. I love distressing the paper, ripping it, ripping it, tearing it, yeah. It's me. And I'm going to use glue dots to attach this. And I'm going to use two glue dots so I make sure that it stays put. And I'm just going to put it on a diagonal right on my torn piece of gray granite here. Let's see how that's going to look. Okay, that looks good. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue this to my card. And I'm going to use just liquid glue. I'm not popping this portion up. And I think I want to put it a little bit higher. I want some of that plaid pattern to be peeking out of the bottom there. And it's too nice to cover up. Now this piece is going to get put up on dimensional. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, apparently I was using scrap paper. Actually, my upline, she sent me a little gift, and she had a sweet message in there for me. And um, she leaves, she puts it loose in the card so that we can resend the card. So that's what that was. All right, and once you have that down, you can go ahead and just keep picking at that until you get it the way you like it. Now, the last thing I added to this card were some in-color enamel dots, and I'm going to put Misty Moonlight ones on this card base to match um, to match the card, the cardstock, because that's what Stampin' Up! does best. Coordinate everything. Whoops. Okay. And I want to 
third one. Um, I'll put it, tuck it in right there. Now, here's the thing. Sometimes these little enamel dots, as you can see the little clear tops, slide off of them. It, they are not supposed to do that. If you have a package that does do that, let me know and I will call Stampin' Up! for you and they will replace it. When these first came out, there was a bad batch that was um, produced and yeah, I got the bad batch. So all I'm doing is putting a drop of fine tip liquid glue on there and I'm reattaching that clear dot, but nevertheless, you shouldn't have to do that, right? So um, if you have a package that does this, <laughs> I can't pick this up. It's sticking to the cardstock. Um, if you have a batch that does this, just let me know. And we'll get it replaced. Because Stampin' Up! replaced mine for me. It wasn't a big deal. Okay. There you go. Now, on the inside, you're going to want to put um, like a white liner on there so that you can write inside your card. But I like this one better. I'm not too crazy about that one. So this much, much nicer. Let me bring out the other two. We'll hide that one. Here's the other ones I made. So, oh, I'm in love with plaid. I like this. Okay. Well, guys, that's, that's it for today. So I showed you the stamp and cut and emboss machine. If you have questions about that, let me know. That's going to be available September 1st to everybody. If you sign up to be a demonstrator now, you can join my team. You can join my uplines team. It's super fun. There's like 150, 200 of us. Um, and you can get the stamp and cut and emboss machine now and you'll get it for a lesser price because you can put it in your starter kit. So, um, and if you want any of the products that you see on my projects today, just head to my store, shopwithnicole.stampinup.net. And I am so glad you guys joined me today, either through live or through the replay. So I hope you guys have a really awesome week and I will see you next Thursday. Bye.